I'm Rob from Smart Boat Innovations. To enable Smart Boating, we need to set up a Wi-Fi network on board that also has internet access. To achieve this, I recommend using a 4G LTE router. In my previous video titled Essential Equipment for Smart Boating, we discussed this router. Please take a look at that video to understand the equipment prerequisites. In today's video, we will install and configure a 4G LTE router. So let's get started. A 4G LTE router serves three essential purposes for our smart boat. Firstly, it enables us to receive alerts and notifications on our smartphones while we are ashore. Secondly, the router allows us to remotely monitor and manage our boat. With the help of the 4G connection, we can access our smart boat app to check real-time data such as instruments, boat location or camera feeds. Lastly, the 4G LTE router serves as the onboard Wi-Fi network, enabling crew members to access the internet and allowing communication between all our devices on the boat. The router I have here is a TP-Link MR6400. It costs about 70 US dollars. I've used this for the last three years, 24 hours a day, and I've sailed to many different countries and it has performed flawlessly. This router has two external antennas to access the 4G signal from uh, the base stations on land. Now on the back, we have a number of ports, but to use this, we need to put in our SIM card. So there's a little port you put it in. It's got a little diagram which direction it should go, and you just push it in. And this one has a little click. When, it, when it's all the way in, it clicks. And if you want to take it out, you just push it in again a bit, and then it just pops out. On the left here, we have the power port and the on-off switch. The unit supplied with a mains powered power adapter uh, and this, this router runs at about 9 volts. It's better to have a direct link to our onboard DC power system, uh, but we need to reduce that to 9 volts. So there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, you can buy a buck converter, uh, which will reduce it from 12 to 9 volts, and also there's a, you can buy assorted plugs which you can find which will fit in the back of this. There are four Ethernet ports. The first port on the left will use for the Ethernet cable from the Raspberry Pi. Again, you push it in and there's a positive click when it, when it enters the port. And there's two buttons for doing a factory reset and also switching off the Wi-Fi. On the back, there's an information label which covers information like the power supply, default URL access, and the factory supplied Wi-Fi username password. We'll cover this just a little bit later. Now, they have uh, the two internal antennas. You can actually detach these and attach external antennas. I haven't done this as my router's mounted quite high down below, and I find that the, the 4G access is quite adequate. Now let's plug the Ethernet cable from the router into our Raspberry Pi. Now the two are connected and we've set up the two major components of our smart boating system. While it is possible to stop here and use the default router, Wi-Fi username and password, I do not recommend it. It is advisable to spend some time configuring the router for security and customization purposes. You can access the router configuration using any device with a browser, such as a PC, tablet or even your phone. Here I'll be using my Windows 10 laptop. With the router powered up, it will automatically start the Wi-Fi network it comes factory configured with. So our first step is to connect to this Wi-Fi with our device, in my case a Windows 10 laptop. So we have to find this network and connect to it. The network name is on the back of the router I've highlighted here in red. Now all routers are different, but nearly all of them have this information on the, on the back of the router. And also with the default password, this is also listed on the back of the router. Now that we are connected, we can access the configuration menu on the router. And we do this using a browser on our device. In my case, I'm using a normal Google. Chrome and the back of the router as well it has the information of how to access it which is a HTTP address so we type that in and here we have the 
the front page of the router configuration menu. Sometimes this, this uh, address is not listed on the back of the router. In this case, you have to put in an IP address. Now, nearly always, it's the IP address I'm going to type here. But if this doesn't work, you just have to search on the internet for your router model and find what the, the IP address is for the configuration menu. Okay, here, this, here the interface is forcing me to change the password for the administration of this router. I'm just going to choose Smart Boat and a password. So for these demonstrations, I'm not going to put secure passwords in, but you should always choose a much secure password than I have. Now we just save the, the password in Windows. And the first page is asking us to change the time zone. I'll just accept. The second one is the, the 4G I'm connected to, which is nearly always correct. Now here it's going to ask us to change the default Wi-Fi, which we should do. Change it to a name that makes sense to us. And here we're going to put uh, Smart Boat Wi-Fi. And a password as Smart Boat Innovations. Of course, again, choose a better password. So now we've connect. Now it's created this new Wi-Fi and disconnected the old one. So we have to reconnect with our with our Windows device to this new network. So we go to Wi-Fi settings. Hopefully, you can find show available networks. And there we are, Smart Smart Boat Wi-Fi. Let's connect. Put in our password, Smart Boat Innovations. Now we've connected to the, the Wi-Fi that we're going to be using for, for our Raspberry Pi and all the devices. So just click on here, I've successfully reconnected, just to continue this GUI. Now it's going to reconnect on that on the new Wi-Fi. Oh, and a smiley face, well done. So it's connected to our new Wi-Fi. So we've successfully changed the default Wi-Fi to the new one. So here's the, the front page. Now nearly all, all of these routers have similar front pages. They show you a bit of summary information. In this case, it's going to show us the wireless client, which is the desktop, and the wired client, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi. Just write down this MAC address and IP address just for, your, just for information for later. And it shows the, the internet status, where we are, we're connected and information about the Wi-Fi the wi we've created. And you can normally always create a guest network, a Wi-Fi network as well, if you want to separate the two, two different networks. Now, all, all of these uh, routers also have a, an advanced option or an expert option, which sometimes you need to use as well. So we'll quickly go through this the operation mode. In the operation mode page, the normal operation is just the, the 4G router mode. But you can also just set up, so if you just want to have a wireless network on board and no access to the internet. Network page, you have the internet options, which just provide more options. Here you have a data roaming switch in case you go to other countries, you can turn that on for data roaming. Data settings, you can see how much data you're using. You can put a limit on there. The LAN, LAN settings has lots of useful, useful information if you want to look this up. Uh, your MAC address, the default gateway, which is default, and the DNS servers as well, which we just all accept as default. The system tools, we have administration menu. Here you could actually change your password for this uh, configuration menu, but we did this already. Now one of the security loopholes, which I find, is the universal plug and play. It's an option we don't need. It always comes enabled, so let's disable that. System tools, we go back to reboot. Now I find it's good to systematically reboot the router every day, just like it's good to switch your phone off every few days just to clear things. So let's just enable one to switch off every day, off and on at 3 a.m. Here we can do a backup of our configuration we changed. 
Um, so just click the backup button and save save the file to some some good location. If you ever need to restore. Um, there's also an option to go back to the factory default here on this page in case you really stuff things up. You can always go back to the original settings. And here we can reboot the route if we like from this menu, also log out. So let's log out. We have successfully enhanced the security and configuration of our router for use in our smart voting system. To summarize the changes we made, we have set a new password for the router's admin configuration, ensuring a stronger level of security. We have created a new Wi-Fi network with a different password, providing a secure and personalized connection for our devices. As an additional security measure, we have disabled universal plug and play to prevent potential security breaches. Lastly, we have scheduled the router to automatically reboot every morning at 3 a.m., ensuring optimal performance and stability. By implementing these measures, we have strengthened the overall security and functionality of our router within the smart boating system. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.